Hi, this is ET370, Lecture 5, Part B. And so we're going to look at this new tool called Large Signal DC Analysis. And uh, specifically, we'll look at the uh, NPN transistor. And the next one, we'll look at the PNP. And so this tool allows us to refine the state conditions. What are the states again? Forward active saturation and cutoff. Okay. And before we looked at just VBE and VBC. So that was just the voltages across the um, uh, B to E terminals and the B to C terminals. Okay. Um, what we're going to be able to do is provide a model, a new model for each state. And it's going to be very similar to the diode guess and check analysis. Okay, and uh, one main use of this is to be able to check the current in the bipolar ejection tr transistor to make sure that um, nothing will burn, right? Because otherwise too much IB, IC, or IE, you're gonna get something to burn. And then you can also check, well, will, you, will your extern external circuitry burn, right? So we don't wanna, we wanna make sure we're under those maximum limits. All right, so here's the model, okay? Um, it's a little complicated, but it's not, not too bad, and I hope it makes some intuitive sense. So again, we have our NPN transistor here. We have VC, where C is positive here. We have VB, where B is positive there, and VBC, where B is positive here. Okay, I drew the same quadrants, BE and BC, as in the previous, uh, in the previous lecture. But um, notice I also drew the currents IC, IB, and IE, and they're all following the NPN symbol here. And remember, not pointing in, that's our arrow. So reverse active or ignoring, let's just go straight to cutoff. And like the diodes in reverse bias, we assume that it's an open circuit. And so we're gonna do the same thing. When this, in, when this is in cutoff, this is behaving like an open circuit, no current can flow. And just like in the diodes, the conditions are when the V is negative. Well, here we'll say when the V is less than 0.5, if we wanna incorporate some forward bias, right? But it's very similar to the diode conditions, right? So uh, if you're gonna guess that it's in cutoff, you will assume no current, but you need to check if these conditions are true. So very similar process. What about for saturation? Well, in saturation, remember this BE, it's a NPN, this PN junction has a kind of some forward voltage. And we'll assume that forward voltage is about 0.7 volts. So we'll just model it with a, um, 0.7 volt voltage supply, okay? And when this is on, it's not a perfect shoot through, it's not a perfect short, but there's a little speed bump, okay? There's a little 0.2 volt speed bump here between C and E. So this is the model. So if you're gonna guess that's in saturation, you would replace it with this model. And then you would have to check, is the current going through here positive, just like a forward bias diode? And is IC positive? Is this positive? And not only is it positive, is it greater, or sorry, is this IC less than what IB times the forward active gain would be, right? So this condition uh, uh, distinguishes it between saturation and forward active, okay? Now in the forward active model, notice this part is still the same, right? Because this is still acting like a PN junction diode. In both, of, in both of these, they're kind of in the on state, right? So you still have to check this condition, IB greater than zero, IB greater than zero. So this lower half is the same for saturation for an active. This is where it gets a little bit complicated and we're modeling it with a current dependent current source. And we've seen this back in ET250. And, and I think it should make sense why this is modeled as, as such, because what we're saying is that IC is equal to IB times some gain. And that's exactly what a current dependent current source does. This is a perfect situation to use this, uh, this model. And so what is this beta? Remember, it's a large number, like 25, 100, 1,000, right? And if, a Dar if we're using a Darlington pair, it's even larger, okay? And so what are the conditions? IB is greater than zero. And we have to check that if this VCE, the voltage across this thing is greater than 0.2. So this condition here distinguishes it between saturation, right? So if you guess this, you're gonna check these conditions to make sure it's in an on state and it's different from forward active. If you're here, you're gonna check that it's also in an on state, but also that it's different from saturation. Okay, and so I just have that rewritten here. So if you guess cut off, make sure that the voltages are negative. If you guess saturation, make sure that the current is positive. And if the current is positive, we then go to this one, check, make sure that the collector current is also positive and it's smaller than what beta IB would be, okay? That will tell you that, yes, I've guessed correctly in saturation. If it's forward active, you're gonna guess this model and then check this and check this, right? And this is gonna tell you it's different from saturation. 
Okay. All right, let's do an example and let's put it all together. And again, like I said, it's going to be very similar to our guess and check procedures from before. So we're going to hold on to this and uh, let's look at this example. And this should look like that NPN tester circuit, right? You have 20 volts here, you have a load, you have your NPN, and you have uh, your base limiting resistor. So current can go in here, okay? Um, let's, it's given that it's beta is 100. It's given that if it's on, if it's Ford active or saturation, that this is 0.7. Uh, they give us this, that this is one mega ohm, 4.7 kilo ohms. And they ask you to find what IC and VC it, uh, VCE is, okay? So the first step, of course, just like in the diode problems, you have to guess and check. We have to guess one of these and check. And if it's wrong, keep moving on, okay? So if I look at this, it's probably not forward active, right? If I have current flowing into here, um, yeah, I think it's probably gonna be one of these two, right? Um, so, but let's uh, let's just, just double check. And by the way, this 20 volt here with this arrow is equivalent to this. In fact, I could have even drawn, drawn it as one 20 volt connecting it to both, right? But uh, let's, uh, let's do the dumb thing and let's just guess if this is just uh, cutoff. And so what we would do, if we guess that this is in cutoff, we would go here to our cutoff model and replace it with an open circuit. And notice I'm also going to put in these voltage polarities correctly, right? And what do I need to do? I need to check the conditions that these two voltages are negative, or not negative, but less than 0.5. If I calculate that they're less than 0.5, I'm correct. But if we look here, we know that this current is, is zero because it's open circuit. By KVL, this is 20 volts. Boom, immediately we can eliminate this, uh, this condition because this is greater than 0.5, broken next, okay? All right, so cutoff is definitely not the answer. All right, let's go the other one. Let's go to saturation and see if that works out. So if we go to saturation, we gotta check these two conditions, right? Okay, so I'm gonna redraw the circuit. I'm gonna redraw this transistor circuit with the saturation model in place. And you gotta be very careful when you do so, right? So I have my 20 volts, good. I have my resistor. I put in the 0.7 volt su uh, voltage supply. I put in the 0.2 and then I go to R2 and then 20 volts, good. So I redrew everything correctly. I gotta put all of my arrows in correctly, IB, uh, IB and IC here, okay. So let's do this. And if I do this, Let's look at what these values are. Well, if I want to calculate IB, that's pretty easy. That's just a nodal Ohm's law, right? So IB is 20 minus 0.7 over R1, right? And that's the, the reason why this is 0.7 because this goes to ground. So, so nice. This is a 1.9 times 10 to the minus five. Very small, but positive. Okay, good. What about this one? Oh, this one's easy too, because it's also a uh, nodal Ohm's law. 20 minus 0.2 over R2. Now here's a common mistake. Let's say there were some elements here. That node voltage is no longer 0.2 volts, right? Because this bottom goes to ground, yes, that node voltage is, is 0.2 volts. But in this case, it's a pretty easy setup. 20 minus 0.2 over R2. IC is 0.004213 amps. Now this part is checked off. This part is checked off. What about that one? Is that satisfied? Well, the beta that was given is 100. Okay, it's 100. So let's now compare 100 times this versus this. And what we see is 100 times IB is this number or 0 0.0019 compared to this 0 0.0042, which is bigger. Oh, it looks like IC is actually bigger. If IC is bigger, that means that we guessed incorrectly. And so try forward active, okay? So I hope you're seeing that this is actually not too bad. Again, your 250 analysis comes into play. Okay, so let's go to the next one. So in the next one, now we're guessing the forward active model. We have these two conditions, IB greater than zero, VC is greater than 0.2. Okay, so I've replaced it carefully. I got my voltage source and my current controlled current source here. Okay, I put in VCE. Notice VCE is across the dependent source. Okay, it's across the dependent source. All right, um, let's first check is the, is the current positive. And again, it's the same as before. Look at this, the nodal Ohm's law, right? IB equals 20 minus 0.7 over R1. And I should put nodal Ohm's law, in fact, okay? Nodal Ohm's law, did I do that here? Oh, I call it just nodal, nodal Ohm's law, nodal Ohm's law. Okay, good. Gotta make sure I'm putting my steps correctly. And in fact, this should be called forward active equations, right? So. Make sure that you're writing all your steps. Okay, so I have my nodal Ohm's law, 20 
minus 0.7, good, over R1, okay, positive number, yay. Now, what is my IC here? And I need to actually solve for the voltage across here. How could I do that? Well, if I know this voltage here, and if I know this voltage here, well, I could do a simple KVL. How could I get the voltage across this guy? Well, maybe I could do the nodal Ohm's law or I can do, um, sorry, a regular Ohm's law here if I knew this IC. And I can get this IC from the forward active equations, right? Okay, great. So if I do that, let's see that. I get IB times 100. So that's my IC if this is correct, 0.00193, good. So once this 0 0.00193 is set, I can do a regular um, uh, Ohm's law. Oh, actually, in my solution, this is actually even better. Um, look at this. For nodal Ohm's law, I can say IC is equal to 20 minus VC over R2, and R2 is known. This is one equation, one unknown. I don't even have to go through the regular Ohm's law on a KVL. Nodal Ohm's law actually does both for me. Fantastic. So now at this point, it's one equation, one unknown. I get 10.92 volts. Okay. And so this is definitely greater than 0.2. Check. So we are satisfied that this is in forward active. Now we have to go back to the original question. We go, what was the, what were we even looking for at the beginning? We're asking, we're being asked for VCE. Fantastic. It's actually 10.92. And we're asked for IC, which is 0 0.00193 amps. Okay, so this is actually good. So we're getting what we want. We're, we're checking that this is uh, in the right state and we're uh, answering the question. The last thing I did was actually put this into the circuit sim and just see if this is, if this is matching. Okay, so 10.92.00193. Okay, so let's, let's just go switch over. Okay, so I'll go over and switch. And if you look here, I actually put in the values. I have my NPN transistor, I have VCE, I have uh, R, R1 and R2, and if I run this, notice the values. I have 1.9 milliamps. That's what we expected for IC and 10.88 volts. Now it's not perfect because this model has a 0.6 volt uh, VBE drop as opposed to a 0.7, but it gives us a pretty darn close um, uh, values relative to what we uh, calculated in our analysis, right? The other thing we can that this simulation shows is that look, it's in forward active. I hover over here, and if you look down in the corner, you can see that it it tells us it's in the forward active state. And sure enough, there's a little bit of trickle current, uh, one nineteen microamps going through here, right? And we get uh, the the gain of a hundred over here. And you can set the gain here uh, of a hundred. See, beta and HFE are the same thing. A hundred, okay. All right. Well, I hope this example uh, helps you uh, uh, kind of burn in the intuition for this large signal DC analysis method. And uh, I hope you found this tool useful. Okay. All right. See you in the next one.